Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice together in worship and be glad in it. We are so glad that each of you are here for worship this day. Uh, You all are social distancing and wearing your masks so well, uh, and we are very grateful for that. Uh, We want to welcome all of our folks who are worshiping online with us this morning, too, uh, and want to assure you uh, that we are working with our live stream and trying different things to make sure that we have good, steady sound uh, the entire time. So do not fret. Uh, If it goes out, we will do our best uh, to get us back online. I want to remind you all that if you happen to attend in-person worship and later in the week fall ill and test positive for COVID-19, we need you to call the church office. Uh, There are some different things that we have to do to keep everybody safe. And so if you'll just let us know if that happens to you, we would love to be praying with you uh, and do what we need to do. Also hope that you all have been receiving all of our many emails that have been coming to you uh, online. You should be getting one to two emails from us per week. Um, If you are not and you would like some help figuring out what might be happening uh, on your computer or if you don't have a computer and you're not receiving something from us in the mail, then please call us in the church office. We're trying to get everything updated so folks are getting things uh, via email who are able to you and other folks are getting it via mail. We want to make sure that you are tied in uh, to what we are doing here at the church. This morning, I want to invite you, uh, I hope that you have your bulletin uh, from online on your phone or you printed it out and brought it with you this morning. Um, As we sing our opening hymn for the healing of the nations, I want to invite you to hum along uh, or to reflect on the words as we sing. vision. Come all who are heavy laden with too much, with too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come all who have hope for liberation, for peace, for freedom, for the kingdom. Hear and trust these words from the throne of Jesus. See, I 
and making all things new. Amen. I want to invite you to join me this morning in our affirmation of faith. It is number 889, and it comes to us from a text of Scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 2. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory, great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. This morning we know and we remember that when we share in our offering together, we are not simply offering our financial resources, we are offering our very lives to our Lord. And so this morning as Jessica plays, feel free to prepare the donation that you may give on your way out of the service this morning or give online, uh, but also use these moments to reflect on how you might give of your very life in the name of Jesus this week. Please join me in this reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by their deeds. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. It is so good to be here with you in worship this day and to see all of what I assume are smiling faces uh, under your masks. It is always just such a blessing, something that we will never take for granted again, uh, to be able to be in this space and worshiping together. So as we prepare our hearts uh, to explore the gospel this morning, would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we come this morning with open hands, 
and open hearts. Offering all that we are and all that we know in you, we can be. Holy God, speak through me, with me, and even in spite of me. That above all else, your gospel would be preached and received. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. How many of you all like to play board games? Would you just raise your hand if you like board games so I know I'm not alone? Okay, so Griff and I got this board game this Christmas from my brother and sister-in-law, a game that they had enjoyed playing with their friends down in Texas, and immediately after we received it, I almost couldn't wait to start tearing into the package and getting out all of the pieces. Because you know, it was one of those games with a million tiny little pieces that once you open, you'll never really be able to find all of ever again. Well, the first time we played it with my extended family, Griff and I were pretty slow moving. You see, each time it's your turn, there are about five steps that you have to complete, and we had to think long and hard about them before moving on to the next step and finally completing our turn. There are tokens and cards and health levels and purchases that each person has to keep up with on their own. And so the first time we made it all the way through the game, seemingly having followed the rules and won outright, we were pretty proud of ourselves. But after two and a half hours, all we had completed was level one. We still had six more levels to go, and little did we know we would go on to buy an expansion pack with four more levels after that. Well, that first night we were feeling pretty proud of ourselves, so we decided to go ahead and dive in to level two. After all, we had the hang of it. How long could it possibly take? But here's the thing that we learned really quickly. Each level had a different set of rules. So it didn't matter if we'd mastered the first level, because level two was going to be completely different than level one, with completely different tokens that we'd never seen before, a completely new process, new challenges, and each time we moved to a new level, we were back at square one trying to figure it out and frustrated and confused. So over the last six months, whenever I am feeling brave, I try to convince Griff, who doesn't love the board game as much as I do, to get it out so that we can see if we can get through another level. And when we went on vacation at the beginning of June, we packed this board game, determined that over the course of that week, we were going to make it all the way to the pinnacle, even beating all the levels to the bitter end. Well, friends, after months of trying to win, culminating on that vacation, we did something that I'm not sure I have done since I was a little kid. After having lost to that last level multiple times, hours and hours of time that we had spent playing this game, finally we just broke down and we made an agreement. We changed the rules so that we wouldn't have to know the discomfort of losing ever again. And so when we dive into the scriptures this morning from Matthew's gospel, that's exactly what Jesus says we are like. We are like children who change the rules of our faith to our liking 
so that we don't have to be made uncomfortable at where Jesus is calling us to go or goodness gracious to admit that we may have at first understood incorrectly and in the name of Jesus, we need to change. We are people who spend a lot of time changing the rules so we don't have to change our hearts. I don't know if you've ever paid much attention to this scripture text before. Honestly, as I was studying and preparing this week, I realized that this is one I usually just read right over because I've never really understood it. Why is Jesus so up in arms about children sitting in the marketplace and playing a flute, as the New Revised Standard Version says? or children sitting in the marketplace and crying out loud. So I'm gonna ask that we back up this morning just a little bit and see where this snippet falls in the greater scope of what Jesus is trying to teach us. John the baptizer, the great forerunner to Jesus, whose honest to goodness job it was simply to prepare the way for the Messiah, to clear the paths and lay the foundation that Christ might come and be recognized as the Son of God. That same John who immediately after proclaiming that one greater than he was coming, met that one face to face right at the edges of the Jordan River and in the waters of baptism, he heard that voice from heaven declare that this Jesus was the beloved son. That same John has been arrested and taken into Herod's custody. And here in chapter 11, he is languishing in the dusty, damp reality of a prison cell under the fist of the evil ones who are in power. And to be honest, he can't see much change with this supposed Messiah in the world. And so even the one who has prepared the way for this very Savior has a question that he sends to Jesus via messengers, a question straight from John's wavering but honest heart. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we wait for another? And as Jesus goes on to teach the crowds, it seems he believes, because he's so seemingly different than the one they were expecting, that that's the question everyone might like to be asking, but unlike John, most folks won't ask it because they are afraid of the answer that Jesus will give. You see, Jesus says, there was this man who came before me. And until now, there was no one born of a woman that was greater than he. In fact, you followed him out into the wilderness to see what he was doing as he prophesied, as he ate locusts, as he wore that weird scratchy clothing. And did any of you accept that John might be my messenger, my forerunner, the Elijah who was to come? No. To what will I compare you? You are like neighborhood children, playing a flute like you're at a wedding and expecting everyone to party. Crying like you're at a funeral and demanding that all join in, always changing up the rules of the game of faithfulness to the way you want to play to fit your fancy. John came fasting and living in the wilderness, a strict set apart life, and you called him crazy and demonic, clearly not the one who God would have sent. Then I came in a completely different way, feasting and living among the community, those on the outskirts, and you claimed I was indulgent, a friend of sinners 
and a lush, deciding that I, Jesus, also could not be of God. What will we have to do to get you to see that following the way of God isn't simply going to be with what makes you feel most comfortable? What will it take for you to see that you don't get to decide the faithfulness rules? What if you have to change your perceptions in order to see what God is doing? Give up your criteria in order to get on board. It's as if Jesus is saying to us that for our own comfort, we would rather be blind to the truth and keep changing our criteria of what makes a good Messiah or a good follower. Keep taking Bible verses out of context to help our side of our whims and arguments. Keep heralding that there's no way Christ would call us to something we've never considered, something that's different and hard. And we do it all for one particular reason. So that we never have to find and feel that Christ-following discomfort. We spend a lot of time changing the rules like a board game to see if there's a way that we can follow God without ever having to change at all. Sometimes I wonder if that's how Oscar felt. For weeks and weeks on end, not that terribly long ago in Poland, when he who had been born and raised a Catholic Christian joined up with the Nazi party who thought they were trying to purify the human race. I wonder if in those early days as he bought a discounted factory at the Germans' demand to get all major businesses out of the hands of the Jews, or as he chose to employ nearly a thousand Jewish workers from a nearby camp because they were the cheapest labor on the market in those days. I wonder if he ever questioned that the faith in which he had been raised, that Jesus would have something to say about how he was taking advantage of everything and everyone around him in order to be a successful businessman and make a fortune for himself. I wonder if in those days he ever had sleepless nights trying to reconcile what he remembered of his Christianity to what he was doing in his everyday life. Or perhaps he slept fine all the time. Because in his mind, to soften the blow and to make it easier, he simply rewrote the rules. The call of what it meant to follow faithfully and assumed within himself that Jesus wouldn't have a problem with him overlooking the abuse and the murder of Jews. But somewhere along the way, Oscar decided that he didn't want to rewrite the rules anymore. That he didn't want to keep pretending for his own safety and comfort that building his fortune was somehow more faithful than saving fellow human lives. And so he stopped asking at the top of his lungs, what do you want me to do about it? And he gave up changing the rules to fit his fancy. And instead, he stepped out into a place of faithfulness and discomfort. And he allowed himself to be changed. And because he 
that gave in to that transformation. He is not the man who made a fortune during World War II. He is Oscar Schindler, on whose life is based the movie Schindler's List, who risked his life and even went bankrupt, that thousands of Jews might make it out of the Holocaust alive. So friends, what supposed rules do you keep changing so that you don't have to move into a place of discomfort and fully follow in the way of Christ? Would you lay those changing rules down this day? But instead, Jesus might change your heart. May it be so in the days that lie ahead. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Surely we have so much that weighs on our hearts. Joys and concerns, celebrations and sorrows that we desire to give back to our Savior this day. To know that he travels with us through whatever we will face. And so this morning I want to invite you to open your hearts as we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, God of the prophets, so often you call us to new places and new ways. You challenge us to dance in new steps and to sing new songs. And we yearn to follow you with confidence and joy. But sometimes our resistance is stronger than our willingness to go. At times our steps falter from where you'd have us be. At moments we can't even hear your voice. And so this day we ask that you would strengthen us with your mercy. That you would renew us with your grace that you would bring us in to your life of compassion, that you would connect us with the yoke of unconditional love, that we may follow you well. God, we know and we trust this day that your call on our lives is even greater than anything we have even imagined or envisioned yet. And so we pray that you would help us to dream your size of dream. And that you would help us to shift where you're calling us to shift and to stay where you're calling us to stay. That even in our discomfort, we may be found faithful in following you. God, you know that there are so many things that we bring into this space this day. Concerns that weigh deeply on our hearts. For violence that happens in our community. For the virus that continues to run rampant all around. For the ways that we have had to shift and adapt and change and wonder if things will ever be normal again the people in our lives that we worry about. God, whatever it is, we bring it all to you this day. And we offer it to you with open hands, knowing that you are the great healer, the one who is sitting there on the throne making all things new. And so we pray that we would trust that this day and seek to see where you are all around us. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. 
And we praise you and we love you this day. And it is out of that love that we pray now together in the way that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, would you listen and reflect on the words of our closing song this day? This is my song. And may this be our prayer throughout our week. zone into discomfort for the sake of following him well. Would you listen this week and follow faithfully? And would you love God? Would you love one another and love the north side of Greenville wherever you are? 
Amen.